A critical shipment of coronavirus vaccines has just arrived here in Massachusetts. And as a result, no new appointments will have to be canceled. And this shipment included more than 135,000 doses of the vaccine. That had been a concern that cancellations might be necessary, but not now. Health and Human Ser Services Secretary Mary Lou Sutters joins us now this afternoon to discuss the vaccine rollout process. And Secretary, let's start off and dive into this good news that these vaccine shipments have arrived. We've been worried about bad weather around the country. So they're here on time, won't be delayed because of the weather. And uh, so this is the very good news today. Thank you, Paul. Um, thank you for having me. So yes, we, um, like every other state in the country, we receive our um, allocations from the federal government on a weekly basis. So we have been uh, waiting for our vaccines that normally arrive Monday through Wednesday. And because of weather delays in other parts of the country, uh, the vaccines uh, were delayed. And we were starting to get nervous on Wednesday when they hadn't arrived. Uh, and through a lot of efforts by uh, Governor Baker and um, others uh, with, the, with our federal partners, uh, the great news is uh, they were all shipped off uh, late last night. And as of this morning, even while it's snowing in Massachusetts, we received, as, uh, as you noted, uh, just over the, the 135,000 doses that we've been waiting for, for um, appointments actually starting today uh, through the weekend through Monday. So the good news is anyone who had scheduled appointments uh, will have those appointments and get those really important vaccines. Okay. So we're, we're, we're pleased that uh, weather delays uh, did not uh, end up having uh, uh, challenges for people who were waiting for their vaccines and had scheduled appointments. Yeah, certainly. That is excellent. Let's talk about the website crash from yesterday because we know that your website vendor apologized, accepted full responsibility and said uh, this would be fixed, would not happen again. But just to go over some clarifications because I think everybody knows we're dealing with huge numbers here. There will be bumps along the way, but we need public confidence in this system to work for people to get to those vaccinations. The CEO of PrepMod, which is the web vendor in Maryland, said, we didn't know that there would be such high demand that it had not been communicated to anyone there in Maryland where they're based that suddenly a million more people were eligible to sign up for vaccines because the age had been lowered to 65. So what went wrong? Well, we were um, very um, displeased with the performance by PrepMod yesterday. Uh, you know, the last time we did a major um, eligibility change was about, was uh, for a half a million people. That was when we added individuals 75 and older and the system uh, worked quite well. And in fact, it's a, it's a booking system. So not to be too technical, um, the mass.gov yeah, site. Let me, let me walk you through that because yeah. um, I think people here, PrepMod runs the website, and, but they don't run the state website, right? They're a, there's a portal and PrepMod manages the algorithms, I suppose, that deals with assigning the actual appointments once people get in the state website and try to sign up. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's actually a very good description. Um, uh, the easiest way to think about PrepMod is it's a booking. It's a it's a booking system. It for, manages the appointments. Uh, some, it manages the appointment mm -hmm. for some of our um, uh, mega our mass vaccination sites. Not all of them, but some of them. Right. So that and, kind of, that kind of um, begs the question: Who's the project manager here in Massachusetts? who wouldn't have gotten that information to them to increase the capacity for a million more residents of Massachusetts. So um, that information was conveyed to PrepMod. And in fact, I was on a call yesterday afternoon uh, with the CEO and her technical team and the Commonwealth technical team from our executive office of uh, technology to uh, go through what had happened as well as uh, assurances that we needed that 
because I kept saying, so tomorrow, what can citizens of the Commonwealth expect? And how do we get back to sort of normal mm. functioning of so, our so of our booking? Right. So what you're saying agents. is, so the CEO of PrepMod said something that isn't true? Um, they certainly were aware of our making the changes because the um, the attestation, Paula, as you know, when we make eligibility changes, we also change the attestation saying now individuals 65 and older and people with two, two or more comorbidities uh, goes to goes to them and they have to upload it in their system. Hmm. And there is daily communication from the Department of Public Health with PrepMod and with our other vendors. So I don't accept that as an explanation for the system, for that part of the system crashing. Hmm. I would say, however, there was unprecedented um, uh, um, movement uh, and uh, hits on uh, both the mass.gov website uh, and then on to PrepMod. It was really an extraordinary number of individuals at 8 a.m. yesterday morning, which it clearly overwhelmed the system. And again, you know, we are we regret what happened uh, to residents of the Commonwealth because right. um, people have been very patient this past year, uh, given COVID. Um, vaccines, you know, are hope, and we get about a hundred thousand, a little bit more than a hundred thousand doses a week which means that people have to still be patient mm -hmm. and to have the a part of the booking system, right? That appointment that gives you hope and, a, and a, you know, that schedule um, for that to fail was completely unacceptable. Um, I appreciate that PrepMod um, made the statement that they bore responsibility and their team and our team uh, worked hours into last night to ensure that things were normal uh, meaning steady state for today. Mm -hmm. and, and things certainly seem to have gone better later in the day yesterday and today, but you received assurances that were satisfactory to you that they're going to be able to adjust their algorithm or deal with this kind of communication breakdown in the future and things will be better, this won't happen again? You're confident about that? They made a... Um, the technical team, like I'm relying on our state technical team, um, you know, the people who are our, our tech specialists, and they worked through late last evening with the prep mod folks uh, and sent an email very late, a text very late last night saying uh, they felt confident that today we would be in a more, we would, the website and the booking, the booking platform form would work mm -hmm. and uh, whatever time it is 2 30 this afternoon and I've been I've been sort of checking myself uh, it has been it has been performing and and despite all the challenges that citizens of the Commonwealth uh, residents um, experienced yesterday mm -hmm. uh, some we were able to book 60,000 appointments for next right. week right. so, um, 60, so I have been people were successfully more, able to book their appointments by the end of the day so that was that was the good thing let me ask news, you Oh, no, go I'm, ahead. Certain, I'm certain they were frustrated and sure. we are we are making uh, we continue to make improvements to the website to make it a, a better customer experience. Sure. Let me ask you about a couple of the moments as people are in the website and going through the booking process that we keep hearing about. Uh, one issue is people losing their spot. So they're able to click on the link to make an appointment. But then they, by the time they go to confirm, the appointment disappears, which is, of course, tremendously frustrating when people have been waiting for so long. So are there conversations about changing that part of the sign-up process? Yes. The um, Again, you know, vaccine um, scheduling, and I talked to um, counterparts across the country. We're all frustrated with various parts of our um, websites and booking process. But one of the things that we are absolutely committed to doing is is um, is changing the process so that you can sort of you know hold the appointment if you would while you're putting in that personal information. That's one of the changes we're looking to make, as well as uh, like when you buy when you um, get theater tickets or other kinds of you know performance right. where you you know you have that little time clock mm -hmm. which says you know you have like 25 30 minutes in order to finish the transaction so we're looking to make several several improvements to the website 
over the coming, the next couple of weeks, which would make it um, hopefully less stressful um, to individuals because we truly understand how stressful yeah. this past year has been. I think a couple of weeks ago when it first launched, we had some people say it was easier to get Springsteen tickets than to get in and, and get that appointment booked. What about... Well, they, had better, they had better luck on Springsteen tickets than I've ever had. Yeah. Uh, what about allowing couples to sign up together? Because, of course, we're dealing with people over 65, over 75 here, and so uh, that is a very stressful part of this as well, that they have to sign up individually. individually. Any way we can have couples sign up for their appointment together? You know, we, we've heard that as well, and um, I think what we're trying to do is really now tick off uh, a number of um, uh, frustrating customer experience we've heard. And I, I think the one that we've really heard the most about is the one about you put in all that information and then you get to book and it's not available. Mm. So I think uh, we're committed to to uh, fixing that issue and adding sort of a, what people refer to as a, a weight room and the like. So we're looking to make those improvements first. Um, I appreciate the uh, the, the companion system actually has worked well for us for individuals over the age of 75 mm -hmm. and you know um, and whether we can do like couples appointments you know i don't want to make uh, assurances I, I can't keep but we are committed to uh definitely improving yeah. the front end experience for people i would pass on as you're talking to your website designers that that is a big problem for people and something that they really hope can be worked out the other piece um, of the puzzle is that the 211 system, the call center, was set up to help people who don't feel comfortable uh, dealing with booking appointments online. That can be uh, a problem for a lot of older folks who aren't used to dealing with the computer. Uh, there have been some complaints about getting through the 211 system that as they're talking to it and answering the prompts, it leads them through a whole menu and then hangs up on them. So is that system working better? Wow, so um, the 211 system has been working, has been working well. Mm. Um, the longest experience we've had for people waiting, uh, and we also have a callback function, uh, uh, was yesterday because obviously people becoming frustrated with the website and booking, you know, of course you would call 211. I mean, it's right. a, a natural thing for people to do. So um, we've had, We've had really good experience. Mm. Uh, the, the website, uh, the call center is in English and Spanish with a lot of other languages available. Um, the call center reps uh, have been well trained to be patient mm -hmm. because, because you know, folks who call them, uh, it started with individuals over the age of 75 and now it's, uh, you know, it's available now for anyone uh, who has challenges with technology. Yeah. Uh, and and we have a callback function for us to call back and help help see if we can help people navigate the booking systems. Yeah. So um, I have not heard, you know. Yeah, anecdotally. I'm, I'm anecdotally. Long we've enough in this pandemic to know yeah. um, I accept people's truths sure. for what they are and we'll take that back to the team. Yeah. Uh, the call center is very important. Yeah, yeah. Anecdotally, a couple of people mentioned that they would get through the whole menu and then it just hung up. So perhaps that callback feature can yeah. can help with that. Now, I know you met with some local boards of health today. So what was that meeting like? What were their concerns and what were you hearing from them? So um, uh, the Department of Public Health staff met with uh, local boards of health today. They meet with uh, them twice a week. There's usually about 700 or 900 people on those calls. And uh, one of the things we're doing is to try to streamline um, vaccine uh, appointments in Massachusetts. And um, uh, local boards of health have been, you know, stand up since the very beginning of this pandemic. And about 120 of them or so uh, provided clinics for first responders and then continued for individuals over the age of 75. And what we're really trying to support are regional collaborations. Berkshire County is um, really the pinnacle in many ways of regional collaborations, which means all the local local boards of health came together with um, the hospital system and others and created a collaborative, like a hub and spoke kind of a model. Mm -hmm. And 
they have the highest rate of administration of doses in Massachusetts. So we're trying to, we've, we're encouraging rather than standalone individual municipal clinics of clinics coming together, locals coming together to form regional collaboratives. They're more efficient for us to help manage the, the distribution of vaccines, as well as we think more effective using uh, the Berkshire model uh, as one example. We have about nine or 10 regional collaborations and we're hoping for more. Sure, and I, we know some local municipalities had been a little bit, uh, their feathers were ruffled a little bit because most of the doses were sent to the mass vaccination sites and they kind of wanted to distribute them at the, at the local level. But it seems as though the coordination of this massive effort, these are all the wrinkles we're gonna work through over through the rest of the winter and spring. Local boards of health have, um, they have such an important role. I, I really don't wanna underestimate that. Um, you know, they know their homebound mm -hmm. residents. They can reach out to residents who live in low income and affordable housing. So local boards of health have a really important role here. It really had to do around these the individual uh, clinics that might have gotten 100 doses. And uh, we think the regional collaboration is a, is a better way to go. Uh, and the reality is most of our vaccines in Massachusetts um, go to hospitals. Mm -hmm. Uh, go to local to go go, go to our hospital systems. Um, the mass vac sites uh, have are like third in line at this point in right. terms of vaccine. Yeah, and you're right about those local boards of health really knowing where the distribution needs to happen in their city and town. Well, Health and Human Services Secretary Mary Lou Sutters, this is a massive undertaking, and we're all working through this. And uh, appreciate you taking the time on a busy day to. Explain what's going on and great news about those vaccines arriving. We're so grateful and thank you, Paula. Take care and be well. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And we're going to take a.